Day 13 here at the University of Colorado. Spring practices winding down. A lot of drama going on. We will get to that. What can you Drama? What drama? What's, <laughs> what's going on? Well, the portal is doing portal. Oh, things. yeah. The portal is portaling. Yeah. Jake, how are you today? I'm great, man. What, how a are beautiful, you? what a beautiful day. I mean, it's never a bad day to be in Boulder, but man, yeah. when it looks like this. We're gonna be, we'll be here Saturday for practice 15. Mm -hmm. But like you said, today is practice 13. Uh, in spite of, or maybe because of, Everything that's been going on out there on the internet, great practice today. Let's go. You know, didn't miss a beat. Offense was humming, defense was humming. Sap was being sap, prime was being prime. Beautiful day to be in Boulder. Love it. We talked to Coach Livingston and Cam after practice. Coach Livingston, of course, trying to install that new defense. Of course, he said, though, it's going to be built around the players. It's not a scheme like Charles Kelly brought in that the players are going to have to adapt. How's that process gone so far? I think it's going wonderfully. You know, you hear this catchphrase of a player's coach. Yeah. That's Coach Livingston. You know, he'll sit in the room, and you heard Cam bring this out in his portion of the press conference. He'll say, look, it's one of me. It's 15 of y'all. Mm -hmm. What do y'all want to call it? I will learn your word. I'm not coming in here with my playbook and just forcing it down your throat. I'm evaluating talent, what you can do well, and let's grow the defense around you and your abilities. And the guys are eating it up. You have a player of the day today? You know, Today's Tuesday, right? Yes, sir. And we did a scrimmage Saturday. Yeah. Let me rewind first. Yeah, let's go. Um, I want to go with Jeremiah Brown on defense. Yeah. You know, this past weekend. And uh, you can close your eyes and reach in a barrel of name and pull out a receiver's name. They all had a great day. Let's go with Jimmy Horn. Great day. Let me tell you about the Jimmy Horn touchdown I just love. Uh, protection broke down. Shadur scrambled out to his right. Just as Shadur is signaling what Jimmy should do, Jimmy was already giving him the signal. Broke open for a touchdown. I mean, their chemistry, their connectivity off the charts, you could easily pick Jimmy Horn for offensive player uh, from the scrimmage. Beautiful. It seems like Shadur and these receivers, you know, what we saw last year on the field, it's just being built upon. They're getting even yeah. better and better. The chemistry is just getting better and better also. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and today, uh, probably a tie of sorts. I saw the defense get the better of some things. I saw the offense get some better of some things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I tell you who I will go with, and this is going to be the first time I've gone with this in now 13 practices in the book. Mark Fassett is punting the Let's go, beep out of the man. ball. So you got uh, right now Jason Phillips uh, is working with the punt returners. And there's a punt return by committee back there learning mechanics. So you got Travis Hunter back there. Of course, mm -hmm. Dylan, uh, uh, not Dylan Edwards, uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> Jimmy Horn Jr. Some of the new receivers are back there, you know, learning the mechanics of it. But when you talk about the practice reps and the way Mark can sky that ball or kick it deep or angle it and make them do the things they have to do in the game, I'm going with Mark Vissette today, man. He Hell performed. Yeah. Let's get down to business. Let's Seven get talking about down it. to business. <laughs> Savion Wilkerson into the portal. Yep. And then Dylan Edwards into the portal today. Yep. Uh, the running back room just seen a lot of attrition. What's been going on? What can you tell the people? Uh, I can tell you what you just said. They were not at practice today. They were not in the building today. Uh, I think that this is one of those things, man, that you just have to look at the chronological order of how things happen. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a red flag to college football out there. There are some people that do not want to compete. You know, it is no coincidence to me that when Coach Prime announced that Charlie Offerdahl was going to be a number two, and then we sign a running back from Ohio State, two guys leave. Yeah. This is not the environment where you're going to be guaranteed anything. Uh, you know, Alton McCaskill, his own statement when he left, he wants to be the one somewhere. And if he's not going to be the one, he's not going. We don't negotiate like that. The best players are going to see the field. If you don't feel you can compete and become the best player, we wish you well in your future opportunities. Uh, Dylan Edwards, Great guy, yeah. you know, very talented, uh, had much success week one last year at TCU, wishing him the best wherever he lands. Uh, but it just seems chronological order wise that he, he left camp because someone was coming in. Mm -hmm. A lot of the questions that are, you know, surrounding this kind of drama right now. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us or share any insight as to why Dylan entered the transfer portal? I haven't spoke to Dylan, mm -hmm. right? So these are, again, just assumptions on my part based on the timeline. Uh, I do know this internally. When you look at what Pat Shermer was developing for this offense, uh, you know, Dylan Edwards was a part of it. You heard his press conferences, yeah. how he was now featured in the pass game and the run game. Uh, you know, for you to have all that going for you uh, and want to transfer for a better opportunity, because let's just keep it 100. 
these guys transfer for a better opportunity. Yep. And I can't knock you wanting a better opportunity, but I don't know what better opportunity than you have than when you're on a team with Travis Hunter, Shadur Sanders, and you're still getting featured in the playbook. Yep. Like I can't make sense of it where you think you're going to go and you're going to get more than that. Mm -hmm. There were schemes based on him. There were play calls drawn up based on him. Uh, as he said in a press conference a couple weeks ago, he was excited about being in the pass game. Just last week, he asked me to mic him up for practice. Yeah. I mean, just last week. So when I look at the chronological order, Charlie goes up to firm two. We sign a running back. He leaves. It just sends a message to me, you don't want to compete. Same thing with, with uh, Savion. You know, he came from Jackson State with us, got here late. His waiver was approved. Mm -hmm. A lot of things were done to help him uh, be able to transition smoothly. Scored a touchdown at TCU. Yep. You know, Dylan had that big day at TCU, and Savion still scored as well. So this running back room is always operated by committee, and everybody eats. Mm -hmm. But they chose to leave. A lot of people on the outside are going to see this as a surprise. Is this a surprise inside the building that Dylan Edwards entered the portal? Let me tell you this, and I, and I say this sincerely, Jake, great question. I don't know a person on God's green earth that has been gifted with the level of discernment and forecasting that Coach Prime has. None of this stuff catches him off guard. Uh, he may not know that this guy was leaving on this day, but he's a great read of body language and attitude and, you know, and kind of seeing that a guy you know, is not really giving this all. Coach and I talked last night, and I tell you something I said to him, and he amended it. I'd rather find out mid-April yes. than mid-September. Mm -hmm. You know, because a guy who will check out for an opportunity now will check out for an opportunity in October. Uh, so, to, as Coach Prime will put it, God shakes a tree, and the bad fruit will fall off. <laughs> the fruit that's going to stay is going to be there. We're happy with what we got. There are going to be some more running backs coming in. We're going to have a fine run game find running back featured in the in the passing game uh, of course man you cannot sugarcoat to try to diminish or water down the talent that dylan edwards you can't even do that with savion and his bowling ball style we got to keep in mind though mike has been running that ball yep you yep. know and so again it gets back to me some people don't want to compete anymore i mean you mentioned michael you mentioned charlie i mean this running back room is going to be a big part of this team for sure. Absolutely. But the story has always been Shador and these wide receivers, especially all of spring. You know, Amari Miller's breakout. Sure. Michael Welsh has been one of the stories. Sure. You could even say Charlie. So sure. while Dylan is, it's going to hurt. It's We're not going to sugarcoat it and say that this doesn't no, hurt because he's a very dynamic player. But the core pieces of the team are still in place. This team is built around Shador Sanders. You have a once in a generational quarterback. This team is built around Travis Hunter. You have a once in a lifetime two way player, right? I'm fortunate enough, I'm 53, I've seen two of them. I've seen Deion Sanders and now Travis Hunter, so I cheated. I got two in my lifetime. But most people out there yeah. are only going to get to truly see this once in their lifetime. You have to predicate all you do around that talent. And how do you armor it and support it? It's much like the, the greatest show on turf, mm -hmm. all right? You had those killer receivers out there, but look what Marshall Falk was doing. You know, Dylan could have been that or, or whatever running back comes here is going to be right. that because there's going to be run plays yeah. and there's going to be situational runs where you have different backs. I mean, I, you know, I tell you who I think about. I think about Alton McCaskill in this. Yeah. I mean, dude, if you wait a week, look how the landscape changed in just five business days yeah. from when he transferred. You know, he wants to be the one. He wants to be some of the one. Right after he did it, the one opened up here. So and, and let me tell you, well, we can't leave out of this. We can't leave out of the, the, the Kamani McLean part of this. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I've seen statements from, from guys and he's saying things like, you know, he wanted to go to a program that wasn't click-based. <laughs> yeah. You know, let me tell you what I witnessed. I have witnessed a head coach who goes well out of his way to not tell what he could tell about these players. Uh, he leaves a lot of it up to interpretation a lot of it is just like, no, I'm not going to do that. Let them fade and wish them well. But when you have somebody say things like that, and let me testify what I witnessed, right? I've been in a team meeting, Jake, and Coach Prime says, come on, you're going to start this weekend. But here's what I need for you to start. You got to be on time for meetings this week. You got to watch so many minutes of film, and you got to show up at practice. The guy hits a trifecta in doing none of them. 
You're told this like on a Monday, right? Mm -hmm. And you miss, you check every box of what not to do. It's crazy, man. But then you leave and say, well, I want to go to a program that's you know, not about clicks. I, you got Kevin Mathis, Deion Sanders, now Robert Livingston. What cornerback would not want to thrive in that system? It's a great question. And honestly, I think you just look at the offers that Cormani McLean's gotten so yeah. far. No real serious P5 offers. There was some interest, but it's all USF, uh, UCF, who is Power 4 now, sure. uh, and Memphis. So. Yeah. I think the word is out there what happened here with Cormani McLean and Coach Prime in this program, and I think teams are obviously very aware of it. And I don't know his high school coach, God bless him, uh, but I've even seen him make statements now affirming what we found out, mm -hmm. statements that weren't made beforehand. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, so I think people are going to see, and again, Cormani McLean, Dylan, Dylan Edwards, Alto McCaskill, uh, Savion Wilkins, who I knew personally from Jackson State. I wish them all the best. But this coach here in Deion Sanders has an open door policy. You can go talk to him any time of the day. He eats lunch in the cafeteria, rides in the elevator. When they have weight room days, he's in the weight room with them working out and talking to him. There's not a player in this organization that can say, well, I didn't get the chance to talk to him. And then they leave without talking to him. They leave and sometimes don't even talk to their position coach. That says so much about that player than it does this organization. A lot going on right now. We'll Lots. be back here on Thursday, man. We will. And then it is that's practice 14. Yep. 15, and I know 15 maybe. is a practice, but it's really for me yes, just sir. like it's graduation day. Yes, sir. Jake, it's been a long April. It has been. I'm, um, I'm excited for you to go home. I know you're very excited to go home. Get a break. Get to go play with the grandkid and, you know, see the fam. Uh, but we'll be right back here around Memorial Day, man, uh, for strength and conditioning phase. You know, college football is year-round now. Yes, it is. Yeah. Love it, man. Stay strapped in. Uh, subscribe to my guy at the pregame channel. And subscribe to my guy at DMVR. And if you're thinking about hitting the portal, hey, talk to us. We'll help you land somewhere. We ain't hard to find. <laughs>